Jeremy Woodward. Jeremy is a, a local. He is an academic staff in the electromicroscopy unit at the University of Cape Town. He's uh, in charge of the first and only cryo EM unit in the on the continent, and he's going to talk about those tra that the training he's got involved with that. Jeremy, no pressure. You stand between all of us and coffee. Yes, I'll be very <laughs> brief. What I didn't realize is that the person before me was going to talk about um, training courses. So I'm just going to say up front that I didn't ever do any kind of course to train students. Okay. So I'm one of these people that was being referred to before. So now I'm going to be talking about training, but from the perspective of somebody that has never done a training course. Okay. So the electron microscope unit, um, this is the electron microscope unit at the University of Cape Town, has similar functions to a lot of other um, sort of imaging core facilities. We need to provide access to equipment, user training, formal teaching. Um, there's a service mode where people can drop off their samples and then have images collected. We do logistics and shipping because a lot of the data collection happens overseas. And um, we have something that's maybe a little bit unique in, in that we initiate a lot of projects in order to um, sort of maintain an academic um, kind of environment within the unit. But if any of you know um, the thing that Warren Buffett says, he, he says you list your priorities, right, your goals, and then you focus on the top five, and then there's, there's one that you, that you avoid at all costs, okay? So the one that we're going to avoid at all costs here is, is the service mode over here. Because service mode means, first of all, it takes up the stock time. Secondly, scientists don't engage in, in the science and they don't actually understand what they're doing. So we're going to try and avoid that. And in order to avoid that, we have to focus on this um, teaching. So we need to do training, we need to do teaching. And, and this is kind of related to that because people get trained on their own projects. Right, so that's the strategy, okay. So in terms of the history of, of, of how this whole thing has worked, before 2002, um, there were no structural biology opportunities for South Africans except to go abroad, okay. Um, this, this, this information over here comes from a presentation from Trevor Sewell, so he's, he's probably looking and saying, you, you, you stole this. I've reworded everything, but the ideas are there, okay. Um, there was certainly no training programs and there was a lack of equipment and it was a resource of poor environment. But it seems that most people are saying that they come from a resource poor environment. At least a lot of people do. But what I'm gonna say now, because this is the kind of thing that we're hearing a lot from all kinds of African investigators, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna highlight two things, right? I'm gonna say, there's no structural biology opportunities for South Africans, but the same can be said of any institution when they are implementing new technology. Let's say a new technology gets invented in, in America. So now we can substitute, we can say that there is no, let's say, um, um, sort of femto laser pulse technology, right? Okay. Opportunities for uh, Europeans, except to go to America. Okay, so this the same thing happens all the time. And as technologies are, are sort of come out, we're always in this position. So it's all very well talking about this position. But in fact, we're all going through this all the time. It, at least we should be if we implement a new technology. Okay. So, so, so the sort of the change in all of this, I can see it's been a little bit cropped, um, um, was, was, this, was this program, okay? It was is a joint master's program in structural biology. So the photograph of me from many years ago has actually been cut off. That's it's actually probably a relief. <laughs> okay. So the program consisted of this. So, 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 so this I'm using as a kind of a case study to, to sort of show how things developed. So from 2002, there was nothing. Um, there was this program for, and for these seven years, um, a series of international experts came to South Africa um, their travel expenses were covered, but they volunteered their time. Um, and, and this included some, some sort of um, very well-known scientists like Richard Henderson, who won the Nobel Prize in 2017, um, another Nobel Prize winner, Joachim Frank, and others, Ed Eagleman, and a, you know, a variety of very well-known scientists who, who took their time to actually train students. So I was one of those students. There were a total of 23 master's students, nine PhDs, 
and 12 honor students that graduated in the end of that project. Okay. And, and at the end of all of this, I mean, uh, it's been a few years since then, obviously, a variety of things kind of changed. We're in a new building, new microscopes, new facilities. Um, we, we started implementing a variety of things. First of all, to, to, to train people, because that's one of the goals that we want to do but also to kind of create awareness. So we have a variety of programs. There's, there's an open day, so we, we just invite people. We have talks that happen within departments. Um, there's some outreach to high schools. There's uh, sort of community projects. So all of these things are, are you know, sort of happening. Um, we're organizing workshops. So various people kind of talk about workshops, okay? Um, I, I just included this because uh, it was being mentioned earlier and I quickly added it to my talk. So in other words, I, I spoke for an hour on cry EM and at this workshop over here, we did one day of kind of collecting data and doing these kinds of things. Okay. So, so these are all contributions. Um, in addition to this, we also have within an academic program, there's actually some teaching that happens. So, um, these 60 postgraduate students, they get an introductory lecture. It's an hour long lecture. These ones over here get a one week course where they learn a little bit about how to operate things. Um, then there's a three week module for students who are super enthusiastic, etc. Okay. In addition to this, there have been programs where we've got great sponsorship and then people have spent one or two years actually working on projects, um, going to international facilities. In this case over here, um, some of the students went across to the UK and spent you know, a year working there and then returned. Um, and and you know, all of these kind of activities happen. And, and, and there's this thing where all of these things are sort of under the umbrella of training. There's all this kind of training happening. And training is the process of learning the skills. You need to do a particular job. Okay. So if you are trained, so if you go through training, at the end of it, hopefully you are trained, okay? <laughs> Which means that you can actually do the activities. So do all of these things, are they actually training? I'm not sure if they are. And so I sort of thought, okay, well, there's, well, there, there are levels of training, okay? There's, there's like, it's like awareness where you say like, hi, you know, we're the electron microscope unit. Then there's like a little bit more awareness. You can like, can, can we sort of discuss what you're doing? Um, can microscopy help? Let's, let me give you some ideas, like maybe we can try this. Um, and then if the business is actually in front of the microscope, you say, well, well, let's put it into the microscope and let's have a look at it. Um, do you want to like put your sample in yourself? And then ultimately there's some kind of proficiency and this is what we're kind of targeting and which we need to target because otherwise it's going to take up all the staff time. And that, you get people to this point is call me if there's a problem. Okay. And this, and this, I think is quite important to, 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 to mention that it applies to sample preparation, data collection and image analysis. So in other words, you have these, these different stages that happen at, in the three different activities that we do as microscopists, because there are these three different activities and, and they're separate. Okay, so I, so I kind of scored all of these different things, right? So, so we've been putting together online resources. I see that actually some, a lot of online resources that other people have put together, they're really great. The, the lectures that you give people, a variety of different things. But, but I think it's important to kind of score them and to say, well, if, if, if training is actually something that's going to produce people who are proficient, which of those are the important activities? And, and uh, we've just been awarded um, this, this grant over here from CZI, um, and it's called uh, CryEM Training for Southern Africa. And I, and I believe it kind of sits somewhere here, okay? Which is ambitious, it's an ambitious claim, okay? Right. So in, so in this whole process, these are the things, through not taking any kind of course where somebody, um, who, who I guess had taken a course to teach people how to take a course. And the person that taught that course probably took a course to, to teach people how to take a course, to teach people how to take a course, to teach people how to take a course, to teach people actually going to do it. So eventually there is actually a point in which 
you're going to have people who've never taken a course and just have to try and figure things out. Okay. Um, so th these are the lessons that I think are important. Okay. So that everything should be hands-on. People should touch the microscope as soon as possible. And if they damage the microscope, it just needs to be repaired. No, really, really, really. Because, be because you can't make people um, feel that a microscope is a precious thing. People need to actually feel confident enough to use it. As soon as you have people who are afraid, then you have problems. They just need to go for it, and you just need to take the consequences. Data analysis happens first. I always teach people about the analysis first. And then secondly, you design the experiment. So we don't first collect data and then figure out how to, how to analyze it. And I think most of the people in this room obviously know about that. And participants must buy and say, so in any kind of training, I, I, I always give people a, a novel sample, something that I say, look, if you really have success on that, it is actually publishable. It doesn't matter if it's some kind of a two-week training or three-week training in the three-week module, the students that actually took that um, in the last round, they all produced a novel reconstruction which can all then all be uploaded into the EMDB. This is, this is a great motivator because people like realize that they can actually make a contribution to science, even though they're just doing the short course. Okay. I think it's important to teach the, the basic principles so that it's not related to a particular technique or microscope, obviously, and supervision on a project is best. Okay. So this is just an example, just very, very briefly of teaching some kind of optics. I have a whole series of lenses. We just shove them together and the students then build a microscope. You can see a lens over there, some clamps. If you need an aperture, you puncture a hole through a piece of paper. Then you hold that up. There's your aperture. What effect does it have on your image? This, this I think, is the way of learning it. And I think while learning about the Fourier transform, you actually put a smile on somebody's face, which if you do it on a piece of paper, you certainly don't get. Okay. <laughs> So here's so so for those who are who, who can actually apply, this is our program. Um, you you come to the program with your own sample, so I think that's important. And you go home with process data that you can publish. That's the point of it, so that you're not we're not teaching a workshop that people are kind of interested in. They come to it, you get accepted to the workshop on the basis of the quality of your samples. And that's all I want to say. I have a few more things to say, but it's time. Thank you.